Hello everyone, and I just wanted to do a quick introduction to make sure everyone's okay using your PCS code book and you understand the PCS code system. So with PCS, it's unlike CPT or ICD-10-CM, where PCS always has seven characters and there's never a decimal point. And so that's important because we can tell the difference between CM codes, CPT codes, and PCS codes by their structure, right? CM codes will have between three and seven characters and will have a decimal point after the third character. CPT codes will have five characters without any punctuation or decimal points. And PCS codes will have seven characters without any punctuation or decimal points. So the structure of our PCS codes for the medical and surgical section, which is the biggest, our first character represents the section the procedure falls in, the second is the body system, the third is the root operation, the fourth is the body part, the fifth is the approach, the sixth is if a device was used, and the seven is a qualifier. Now, the biggest part of PCS is really mastering the terminology that we use in PCS because it's different than terminology we're used to. So I would recommend that everybody makes flashcards for the root operations. Now you can get these electronically, there's some on Quizlet, but I recommend highly that you make your own. And the reason is we know that by actually taking the time to write out the words, write out the definitions, and then practice what you wrote, it moves that content from your short-term memory to your long-term memory and it's easier for you to recall it. If you just look at it on a screen or look at it on your iPhone, whatever device, it's gonna store it in your short-term memory and it's harder to move that information to long-term. So the act of writing out the terms really is really beneficial. So in the seven code format, these can be numbers or letters with the exception of an O and an um, I. And the reason is that can be confused with the numbers 0 and 1 because they look so much alike. And then Z is kind of our placeholder. It's the value that we put in the character for no value. So you still put a Z there if that matches your code that you're coding, but the Z doesn't represent anything other than no value. And there's no decimals or punctuation, like I said earlier. And then the titles of the characters are going to vary from section to section. So there's medical and surgical, there's obstetrics, there's ancillary, there's different sections. So how do we use the PCS codebook? The, the best way and the best approach I would recommend to you guys is that you look up the index, which is at the beginning of your PCS book. So if you guys want to get out your ICD-10 PCS codebook, the 2018 by Ahima, it's the orange one. On page one is where the index starts. And you can see that goes all the way to page 87. So this is called the alphabetical index, and this is where you actually look up the procedure to find out what table to go build your code in. Now, when you look up your procedure, you get at least the first three characters of your code, sometimes four, sometimes five, sometimes you get the entire code, but you always look it up in the table first. Now, a seasoned coder can just go to the table, but we're not going to go there right now. So I recommend that you look it up by the root operation to make sure that you're getting to the right table. So the root operation, you know, alteration, destruction, removal, extirpation, resection, all those that you're learning, look it up by there and then ask yourself what, so you go to the what the root operation is and then where it was done. And then you flip to your table so let's just practice. Let's look up um, irrigation. I'm just going to do irrigation, which is on page 42. And then if I did irrigation of the biliary tract with an irrigating substance, it's the first one there. 
I see three E one J. So that's the table I flip to. The table is always the first three characters. So I'm gonna to flip to three E one J, which is gonna be at the back of the book. So like I said, the medical and surgical is the biggest, which is section zero and takes up the bulk of the book. So three E one. So hopefully you guys found table three E one. And then at table 3E1, which is on page 1346, we go till we find J. So it's in the second row there, so J. And then we would just complete characters five, six, and seven. So we would have to know our, our approach. Let's say it was percutaneous, we would pick three. Our sixth character, we only have one choice, eight. And then our seventh character, we would need to know if it was diagnostic, meaning that they're gonna look at the sample or no qualifier. Well, if we're just irrigating, we're just putting on a cleaning substance, we're just gonna say it was not diagnostic. So we're gonna pick Z. So our code would be 3E1J38Z. One thing I wanna point out is you can't jump around the rows in different columns. So J is in the second row, you guys see that? You can't like pick I couldn't go to approach and pick the row below it where there's only percutaneous. You have to stay at the row where your, your fourth character is. You have to stay in that row all the way across. So when you're, you're making the flashcards, get familiar with the terminology. Like I said, it's not the same terminology we're used to, but the terminology has to define the intent of the procedure that we're coding. So for example, and we're gonna code this um, at the end of the presentation, but an appendectomy, I want you to just think about what you think the root operation for appendectomy would be. If we break it down, right, medical terminology, ectomy is excision and appy is appendix. So does medical terminology help us? Just some food for thought till we get to that piece. Okay, so here's that case. So if we did an open appendectomy, can we just use medical terminology? Could I use excision of appendix? Let's look at our definitions of the root operations. An appendix B should be your best friend for a while until you're really learning the different root operations. An appendix B is on page. Oh, sorry, it's appendix A on page 1458. So this is where I would make my root operation flashcards from, but excision, if I come down to the ease, the definition is cutting out or off without replacement a portion of a body part, a portion. Well, let's look at resection. Resection is cutting out or off without replacement all of a body part. So when they take out the appendix, do they take out part of it? No, like I've never heard of that. They always take out the whole appendix. So we would never use excision with appendectomy because we're taking out the entire appendix. So we can't use medical terminology, right? We have to master these terms. So we're gonna look up resection in our index. So let's flip back to resection. which is on page 69, and then I go down to appendix. It's, so it's in the second column there. Appendix is at the top, so it's zero D T J. Hopefully you guys see that, zero D T J. So now I'm gonna flip to that table. Zero D T J, which that table is on page 618. Okay, so appendix, which is J, is in the first row. So now I'm going to go to my fifth character. And I have open, percutaneous, endoscopic, via natural, artificial opening, via natural, artificial opening, endoscopic. Well, our case said open. So I'm going to pick the character zero. And then character six and character seven 
both don't have anything. So Z is the placeholder. Remember, it means no value or no device. So our code is going to be 0DTJ0ZZ. Z. Right? 0DTJ0ZZ. Z. Okay, let's do one more. So this one, I have a closure of an open wound of the scalp. So what do you think the root operation will be there? Let's go back to Appendix A. And closure is not a choice, right? So we can't use that. I'll give you guys just a second to look and see what you think it might be. And the one nice thing about this appendix, as you notice, there's examples of procedures. So don't discount that and not look at that too when you're looking at these. So for this procedure, closure of a wound scalp means we're, we're repairing a laceration, right? We're suturing a laceration. So we're gonna go to repair. And that definition is restoring to the extent possible a body part to its normal anatomical structure and function. So now we go to our index by root operation. So I'm going to go to repair. And we repaired what? Can we go repair scalp? Let's see. So repair is on, well, it starts on page 61, but we're on page 63 for the S's. And scalp's not an option, right? Because we're not repairing the scalp per se. We're repairing the skin of the scalp. So go repair, skin, and then scalp. And hopefully you see all seven characters there. So we have 0HQ0XZZ. So this is a perfect example of when you do not have to go to the table if you don't want to, because all the codes are right there. Now, most coders will do what we call verify and still go to the table. So I'm going to flip to the table just to make sure that that code really tells the story of what I coded. So OHQ is on 729. So if I look it up, it was of the skin of the scalp, external, obviously, and then no device, no qualifier. So perfect. Okay, well, I hope you guys understand PCS a little bit more and I cannot you know, emphasize enough to make those root operations because once you can find the root operation, it makes the coding process so much easier. So master those root operations and get, get familiar with the terminology that we use.